So today I'm going to recycle this old Ikea curtain, which is 100% cotton, into some kitchen towels. Um, I wanted to reuse the fabric because as a curtain, one single curtain without a pair doesn't really look great in my house. I don't know what happened to the other one. I lost it when we moved and it doesn't even fit the windows I currently have. But another problem that I had was that my kitchen towels keep sliding off of the oven bar that I hang them on um, because after they get wet, they just the weight distribution's lopsided and they fall to the ground. Once they fall to the ground, I can't use them because we have cats and they have toilet toes. And I don't want to wipe my hands on toilet toes. So I'm going to use this fabric. It's 100% cotton in a color that I like. And I'm going to cut it up and make towels with an eyelet insert so they can um, stay on the bar. So here goes. So first we should iron the fabric so we can get a good cut and I will get to it and then we can cut. So this is the part where I try to figure out how many towels I can make. I measured it and it's 55 inches wide and 90 inches long. I originally wanted to make 20 by 28 towels but it makes more sense to do 18 by 30 towels because that way I get exactly nine towels and maximum use of this fabric. So in order to cut this, I'm gonna use a rotary cutter and a straight edge. And I folded it into thirds like this. It's not, um, you're not getting graded on it, so it doesn't need to be perfect. We're not making clothes for people, just dish towels, you know? So no pressure. Right there. And then one cut. Depending on the sharpness of your blade and the thickness of your fabric, maybe two. Okay, two and a half. Let's call that three. Ta-da! So the remaining part that you just cut off, well, you can do whatever you want with this. Make a belt, a sweet headband, totally up to you. We'll set that aside. Okay, so now that we have folded our fabric into thirds and both in the long way, we want to smooth it out and fold it again so we can just cut and sew next. If you cut it all at once, you don't have to keep going back to the same step. I just want to make sure we can straighten it out on both ends. And again, this is just as best as you can. It's a kitchen towel. It doesn't need to be exactly perfect because I know I've never gone to someone's house and measured their kitchen towels. And if you have friends like that, well, oh, you'd better consider who you're hanging out with. Because that's kind of a tough life, right? When you have to have perfect towels too. All right. Getting there. So now that it's generally where I want it to be in terms of a long threefold, I will fold it again and just try to make it even. can kind of smooth it out. When you smooth it out, you can feel if there are wrinkles underneath and kind of get those out. You'll see them as you press and then just pull it so it all feels flat. I think that's good. And now we want each of these to be single cut pieces that can be lifted off. So 
you will go to your edges and just cut along the edge here. And I will use regular scissors for this. Got your fabric only scissors that hopefully your fam hasn't decided to cut weird stuff with. I live with cats and they don't have thumbs so I don't have to worry about it. But let's go ahead and cut it. So anywhere there's a fold, you wanna cut through because that will be the edge of your new kitchen towel. So these are all unfolded now. All right, and then just go to the next edge and keep going until you're done. edge has a few layers of fabric so I want to get under all of them and you do want to cut the ends first because then it makes cutting the sides easier I'm actually doing this before I finish the side cut because the ends need to be cut first all right so that's done I can go back to you. and the end edge this edge has a few layers of fabric so I want to get under all of them And you do want to cut the ends first because then it makes cutting the sides easier. I'm actually doing this before I finish the side cut because the ends need to be cut first. All right, so that's done. I can go back to here where I finish my little edge here. There we go. And then I have one more fold on this side, so I gotta get that too. just have to give that a cut. Just like you did the other ones. And it looks like there's two more folds, so I should get those two. One more. All right. So now we have all these individual pieces. I should have nine of them. I'm going to go ahead and serge the edges so they don't fray. You can use pinking scissors or you can just use, um, you can roll it on your sewing machine and hem it. So right now I have black thread on my serger and this is dark gray. I don't have dark gray for my serger thread so I'm gonna go ahead and use black like I do for everything. All right, so we got nine of these. It's gonna take a while. Here we go. Make sure you don't put your fingers in the cutter and try to stay safe. Now that we have the edges bound in our towels for the most part, it's time to put in the opening where the eye hole where the towel will go through and hold itself on the rack. Um, after you put, after you decide where the hole is, 
I think I think I'm gonna put mine five inches down. Seems like a good spot for it. So I'm gonna open up a hole and then seal it with, um, wrap around it with seam binding. I have this seam binding. I made it myself during the pandemic because I was making masks. So I have some of this that I made with recycled fabric. It's gray also. Um, you can also buy seam binding or bias tape at the store that's just pretty much like a ribbon you fold over and so you can even do a contrasting color there's this pink stuff um, I like to go to thrift stores and I find these I got this for a quarter so it you can save yourself a lot of money by going to thrift stores or um, you know making it yourself here it is it's not the prettiest but I bet it will stay on I so it turns out I didn't like how the towel looked with the um, eyelet and fold over so on my next eight towels I'm going to hem the edges and then put snaps in the middle on either side so they'll snap onto the oven bar. So I'll try that out and report back. Now we're gonna put snaps in because those work so much better. Um, so what it looks like is this after I'm done and it just snaps like so and I'll show you how to put those in so after I hemmed the towel folded in half hamburger style and then from the folded edge I measure three inches down and I tested that on my own oven and it seems to work just fine. So take our measure three inches down and I make a mark with my Sharpie and then I do the same on the other side and I try to make sure the tips are matching too so it's not very skewed. Got two dots. All right, then I have a snap kit. So it's just these um, gunmetal silvery snaps that I like. You can use whatever snaps you want. And then a helpful tool to have, it's called an awl and it's a pointy stabby thing and I'm just gonna push it into where I drew my dot with my sharpie and so now you have a hole and you can put your snaps in and I just use the hand tool that comes with the snap kit I have a tiny mallet. I got this from one of my reptile enclosures and it's good for something like this. Give it a few good whacks. You can see the, it's in there now. And then we put the back side in. Hammer it down. Yeah. 
and it's on. So look at that. Snap. And then do the same to the other side. And you're good to go. So this is the second iteration and I like this much more. I added snaps to the sides. So now you can just snap it on. Won't come off. Yay.